Hey guys, how's it going? This is episode two of the Narodec 0360 engine overhaul. So it's been a while. The reason it's been so long is we've been just waiting on parts to get back. So here we go. Okay guys, this episode what we're going to do is we're just going to be talking about the differences between a wide deck and narrow deck uh, 0360 and IO360. So we've got two here. Uh, we've got the 0360 project that we've working on. I know it's been a while, but we're working on, we're going to talk about the differences between a narrow deck engine and a wide deck per, predominantly. We've got one of each in the 360 family. So right behind me, we've got an IO360 uh, out of a Mooney 201. So it's an IO360 that's considered a wide deck. This engine here, the narrow deck, is out of a Traveler. Um, both engines are constant speed propellers. Um, Again, this one is uh, just a carbureted engine. This one is an injected engine. So we're going to talk about some of the differences. First off, let's talk about the crankcase, and then we'll get them out of the way here. The crankcase on the narrow deck, the reason they call it a narrow deck, um, when you look at the dimensions and all of that, the actual deck height, if we talk deck height between the two cylinders, there's no difference between a wide deck and narrow deck. Very little, if any, uh, difference at all. So I was always wondering why they call it a wide deck. And even I've had, like, homing folks say, well, it's a wide deck just because it is what it is. You know, you'll know it because it is. Look at this. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. However, when you look at the, uh, this is our, we just got done using these plates for assembling this engine here. These are cylinder hold-down plates, pretty much the same thing like homing does. Um, we make these out of, we, ours are out of steel. They're, you can buy some out of aluminum. Um, but these are uh, these are some we made up ourselves. In fact, if anyone really wants, I've got a DXF file that you can uh, we'll send them to you for don't cost nothing. But we have these uh, jet cut out of uh, steel. Long story short, this is a wide deck engine. This is narrow deck. Well, you, if that deck height is the same, why do they call it a narrow deck? Well, the reason they call it a narrow deck is this does not fit. This is a wider deck. There's a wider deck on the. Um, wide deck engines. You'll also see the suffix on your serial number. If there's an A suffix on the end of your serial number, like a dash 51A, um, then you know that you have a wide deck engine. If it doesn't have an A on it, it is a narrow deck. So that's one giveaway. So that's the one giveaway is it is a different height, or pardon me, different pad arrangement. So the narrow deck has a smaller pad. The other thing is the cylinders also have a thinner flange. The wide deck engines have a thicker flange. In order to when they were pumping up the engine, again, these engines come from the 0290, then they evolved to the 320, then the IO320, then the 0360 to the IO360, and they kept pumping the power into it from 150 up to 200. Um, they had to beef it up. So one of the things they did when they got to the 320 is uh, they put these hold-down plates that go on the flange of the cylinders. So you can tell if you see an engine, it has the flange, uh, the flange plates, you know it's a narrow deck. So that's one giveaway. The other giveaway is the real, the big one is you're going to see internal wrenching nuts holding down the lock, lockdown plates or these hold down plates. So if you see the, the Allen uh, in, internal wrenching, you know it's a dead giveaway. It's a narrow deck engine. Still, if it's an 0320 or 0360, it's still same horsepower. It's just different cylinder arrangement. The cylinders don't go back and forth between wide deck and narrow deck. Two completely deals, different deals. Different hole pattern, different engine. The other thing is if you get into a narrow deck engine, because of these internal wrenching nuts, you're also going to have to get the special internal wrenching uh, cylinder head wrenches, which are, again, quite a bit different from the um, regular wide deck. Wide deck uses regular hex nuts. So that's going to be, that's going to be an issue also. So that's kind of what's going on as far as the cylinder hold downs and that kind of stuff. Another thing is the, the narrow decks are an older generation engine. As a result, you're not going to see the mounting snogs that the uh, later engines had on them for the alternators and whatnot. So what they did back in the day is you'd have adapter brackets that would mount up here and um, take care of your generator. Back then, generator mounting. So that's kind of a different deal. Um, so the later engines, again, as the airframers ask for uh, some different attributes added to them, you're going to see some different uh, protuberances from that. Um, 
So that's kind of what's going on there. This engine, again, is very close. It looks very much like a 320. The sump <clears throat> is a uh, very simple sump, whatnot. If you look at the sump here, again, it's all cast in, the uh, riser and all that. Everything's uh, heated. Your induction area is heated by the oil. And this is a uh, 0360 A1A, so pretty early mark engine. Um, so that's that. There's a couple other differences with the three, the later wide deck engines, is they would have more removable through bolts. So this, these came out of this engine here at overhaul. So four removable through bolts, where the uh, this has two fixed, uh, I believe it's two fixed through bolts, and then four removable through bolts. Again, four, a, a four cylinder engine. So that's the way that cylinder arrangement set up. This one, all the through bolts are studded into the case themselves. You've got uh, four in the right case and then two in the left case. Uh, again, to keep from having stud tear out uh, and repair necessary at overhaul, they basically took the, the uh, studs all the way through and then they even made them replaceable at overhaul. So kind of differences for the wide deck engines having re the replaceable studs or removable studs where the older engines, they're fixed there. Uh, again, these are things that will be removed and installed when you send these out for overhaul if you have to have any case work done. So that's what's going on with the case. Really nothing more. Uh, some differences. You're going to see some differences in the casting. Uh, some of the where they put the cylinder numbers. Some little differences and whatnot. You'll see some more webs on the later wide deck engines. Basically thicker, uh, heavier duty cases. And again, that comes from... Um, just experience, fleet experience, uh, fixing the weak spots. Um, dipstick and oil pressure are pretty much in the same places. They don't really move around much. Uh, this is again is a dynafocal engine. There are also on the old Naradex, there's also conical mounts. You'll see those in the Piper products. Super Cubs, Tri Pacers, that kind of stuff. You'll see the conical mounts, but this is a dynafocal uh, mount engine. Um, so that's kind of what's going on there. The accessory case on this engine. Again, very similar to a 0320, um, early 0320 or later 0320 or the um, dual Magneto um, wide deck. Very similar oil pump on the inside mounted to three studs. Pretty similar stuff. Uh, arrangement, fuel pump. Um, fuel pump, uh, I think governor goes back here. I forget which one. Vacuum pump. There's a governor and then uh, some other stuff there. So uh, dual Magnetos and then various ports for your oil cooler setups. So a uh, couple of little, little differences, not, not a big deal. On the uh, wide deck, this is a late model wide deck engine, single magneto. So this engine actually picked up some of the uh, H2AD or the uh, 76 series um, attributes as far as this is a, where this is a sand cast, uh, sand casting. The, uh, this rear case on this engine is a die cast. So a little bit different. This is set up for a single magneto. Again, a lot of you folks, when at overhaul, you're going in and replacing these with a different accessory case. I believe that's an option. Not sure on this engine. Uh, it's got fuel pump pad, governor pad, and then vacuum pump pad. So that's what's going on in this particular engine. Um, kind of neat stuff. On the sump, we'll talk about the sump real quick. Um, yeah, let me move a few things around. We'll talk about the sump. Okay, sump design. This is a... Very similar to what you'll see on your 0290s, uh, 0320s, 0360s, those kinds of engines. And when they started pumping the engine up, they started going with different induction systems. Instead of coming in from the bottom, they had uh, horizontal carburetors, the H6, I think, series from HA6 series from uh, Marble Shevler. Uh, then they also did fuel injection, Bendix fuel injection, whatnot on the front of these. So you'll see this is a front induction sump on the wide deck. This is, again, a 200 horse. IO360, um, different uh, induction system, uh, kind of a tuned induction. Actually, the induction systems on Lake Cummings are very good. Um, tuned induction goes in. There's actually a plenum here on the bottom half of the sump. The upper half is for oil. As a result, they ended up winging out the oil sump a bit wider than this sump, about another three or four inches. And then this sump has also got castings bored out that uh, if the airframe decides they need a lower a lower updraft carburetor injection system they can put it there or put in the front just depends on how it's customized for the undelivery to the airframer so that's what's going on as far as that goes so that's kind of we've talked about the sump we've talked about the accessory case the cylinders 
the cylinders on your par on your narrow deck uh, engines are going to, or your carburetor engines are going to be parallel valve, and you can tell those because they've got the regular. Oh, let's see here. We got it here. They've got the standard valve cover. You'll see that when you see this kind of uh, this shape valve cover. Um, this is an angle valve. Again, more horsepower, more heat, uh, better efficiency, and all that. So that's that's your angle valve engine. Um, again, on our engine, this uh, little 029, or pardon me, 0320A1A, 0360A1A. Uh, the crankshaft on it is a four throw, three main crankshaft, no counterweights. Now, the, the, the crankshaft on this engine has, is a fully counterweighted crankshaft at the back end with two counterweights. So, 200 horsepower versus 180, and then just an iteration derivation. So, probably a much smoother engine on this. But 180 horse, 200 horse. Um, so anyway, that's about it for the differences on a uh, narrow deck versus wide deck engine. We are going to uh, start putting this thing together, and we'll bring you along on that. But for this episode, that's the differences between a two nine or pardon me, a wide deck and narrow deck. And a lot of this, you'll see a lot of similarity in the 293, 2360 families. They're all a little bit the same, and they're all a little bit different. So hang a rats out, go fly yourself. Um, the, uh, what? It's a 20C. It's got a 201. If you look at this. It's not a 20. It's a 20C with a 201 mod. With a mod? Yeah. Yeah, the mod. But if you look at this engine, it can only go in a 20201. But it didn't. They don't know that. They do now. <laughs> Shut up. I didn't say anything. Uh, yeah, I can. I'm facing. Yeah, I know. Well, you're over there hooning. Um,